Today I want to talk about aging. <laughs> it's not very quick. Um, do you know how aging works in the biology? The cells die and grow. The cells, right, slow down, correct, right. right. exactly. So you all know that, that every cell in your body actually undergoes division, mm -hmm. right, mitosis. Mm -hmm. The cells split and produce from one cell to two cells. So all the cells in your body are going through undergoing that that um, process where they where they divide to make more of themselves. But there seems to be a limited number of times a cell can divide. So when a cell divides and it produces two, these two actually have a marker. They are not perfect replicas of the original. They actually have a marker that says you've already divided this a number of times. Understand? And that gets carried down through all the cells as they divide and divide and divide. Now there's a reason for this. Because if that marker is not working correctly, what will happen is the cell will forget how many times it's, it's undergone that division. And there will be no guard in place. It will begin to divide without discrimination. Which is where you have cancer occur. Where the cells divide without knowing. They just divide rapidly without knowing. How many iterations of God. So that marker is there for a important reason to prevent just um, unbridled division, unbridled growth of a certain cellular mass. So cancer actually lacks that ability. It lacks that marker that tells them, oh, I only need to divide a certain number of times, then I need to die. Yeah. There's another reason for it as well. When the division happens, the, the genetic material that's carried on to the cell actually becomes a little bit distorted. It's like copying something 50 times. By the time you reach to the 50th time, it may seem the same, but there's actually degradation in the data. Degradation, right? So it's to prevent anomalies, to prevent unusual, uh, what they call mutation, right? Where the cell develops some anomaly that will make it weaker. So it will, it will only have a certain number of times that it can be done. So, the, the aging of the body is actually important for maintaining the integrity of the body. It sounds kind of strange, because slowly as the body ages, it gets, gets worse off, right? It goes off. But it's actually important for maintaining the integrity of the system. That, that one particular set of tissue doesn't, doesn't overgrow itself and begin taking over the system. But that mutations in the system that would compromise it won't, won't happen so often. So that the system will remain its integrity, will remain all pristine. So the aging of process is also affected in the DNA. So when they when the cells divide, there's a mark on the DNA, it's called telomeres. So you can think of it like you know your shoelace has that little little plastic thing that, that keeps it from unraveling. So the DNA at the end of it has something called telomeres, which prevents it from unraveling. Yes. And that telomere, it's like a little band of extra cell, prevents the DNA from degrading over, over many divisions. So when, after many divisions, the telomere gets worn out, worn out, worn out, and then eventually there's no telomere, so that when it's dividing now without the telomere, that's where the DNA starts to degrade, starts to break down. So the telomere, as they say, is, this is, this is where we are in the science. They said the telomeres are responsible for aging. So in an older person, you can see the telomeres have become very, very reduced in the cells. And in a child, for example, the telomeres remain very robust. So there's rapid cellular division, for example, through puberty. But the telomeres remain pristine. Yeah. So they said telomeres are responsible for that protection of the cell, even as it divides, preventing it from breaking down or preventing it from going the route of becoming a rogue cell, which will divide without without discrimination. So that telomere is important. And actually they've done the studies that not physical yoga, but in the chanting, the chanting part of yoga, what they call bhakti yoga. They've done studies with both the physical part and the bhakti part, the chanting, chanting of mantras and things with yoga. And they found out with the hatha yoga, 
The two of them are very dominant. They are not influenced in any way by that practice. But in the chanting, the group chant, they actually see that the telomeres begin getting longer. So the aging process starts to reverse with inside the cells. This was actually a study that was done two or three years ago. So the physical yoga does not prevent your aging. The physical yoga may develop your strength capacity, your flexibility capacity, the physical capacity of the body, but does not prevent aging. But the more, as you could say, the more passive, passive forms of the practice, chanting, which doesn't move the body as much, is tapping into something else. It's influencing the body in ways that we don't yet understand. So they actually did the study where the telomeres got longer after the, the period of chanting. So they did chanting in the 60 days or something like that. And the telomeres have gotten longer. So they didn't know anything about chanting. Breathing. It's, it's, it's a breathing. I don't think it's just a breathing because they also have a control group of breathing practice. So they specifically said of all the practices, it would be chanting that okay. So they would have they would have done the control. So it has to do also with the vibration. Right. Sound vibration. It has to, it has something to do with the vibrations of the sounds. Yeah. And it also did a control group of people who were just sick, not chanting, not the yogic chanting, not Sanskrit. Which was quite fascinating. Yeah. So this is me encouraging you to take up a more holistic practice, as I have always said to you. The physical practice is nice, it's good, it's important. It will maintain the body and allow you to have your potential for much, much longer in your life. But if it's anti-aging you're looking for, the physical practice alone won't give you that. Yeah. I actually thought about it and I kind of reflected when I had read that study. And I reflected on it and I said, oh, that's why Surya Namaskar. You all know that there's a mantra, mantras for Surya Namaskar. Yeah. So they, right, so the complete practice of Surya Namaskar is, you know, it's supposed to go up to 12. It's supposed to be cycles of 12, right? That there's actually 12 mantras. So you would say the mantra, do one cycle. Say the mantra, do another cycle. Say the mantra, do another cycle. So the, the Surya Namaskar actually has mantras as part of the practice that I've never really thought about. So that's something that made me stop and consider, oh, maybe that's why they're doing it like that. Because they understood that it has to be working together in some way. So I would, I would venture to say that the combination would be better than just the tactic. Because the combination would make your body more involved in the process, rather than just sitting on time. So one day I will encourage somebody to do a study, see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So sometime later this year, I will probably do a workshop on that, the, the, the chanting of those mantras. Yeah. It's 12 mantras for the sun, the Surana Mascara, so they have 12 different solar mantras. Of course, the aging is all on our minds. So I thought that would be the book. And the science for aging, of course, is still advancing. Understand what it is. All right, everyone, let's get out of our practice. Ah, one day of warm right? Feet, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Side to side. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Getting more flexible. Eight, seven, six, five. Boy, do the man. Go to the four, three, two, and one. Right way back. Stretching forward and back. Focus on the sole of that back. Five, four, three, two. Switch. Five, four, three, two, 
one, that's good. Let's do the feet exercises. So taking that right foot forward, pushing the heel down, those are bend the knees. And they're gonna roll the heel going up, right? Rolling the heel. Five, four, three, two, and one. Roll the heel going in, please. Five, four, three, two, and one. Right going back, left leg up. Heel down, toes up, soften the knees, roll the heel going out, five, four, three, two, and one, roll the heels going in, five, four, three, two, and one, coming back, go to the right leg forward, lift off the heel onto the toes and roll the foot. And put a bit of weight into it, right? Remember? Okay, taking a knee side to side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let's go come back. Left leg forward. Pull our toes down. Pull the foot down. Put some weight into it. Side to side. 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and back. That's good. Okay, you want to do the toes? Take the feet to the width, turn the right foot in towards your left. Bring the side of the foot down, bring the toe off. Soften your knees, stand up tall. Make sure the arms are relaxed, okay? Crunch the toes on that right foot and feet for a little while. Feel it a bit. Oh, crunch the toes. Spread it wide. One more time. Crunch the toes. Spread it wide. Bring the big toe down. A little toes up. Relax the hands. Okay. Bring a little toe down and the big toe down. Big toe up. And relax. Get that foot shape. You can't do this without watching it. Three. I know that's a two. One. It was like that for me too. And it's interesting because my right foot will do without me looking, but my left won't. <laughs> Turning the left foot in. So that's kind of interesting, the wiring in the brain, right? Bring the, the pinky down and the toe off. Good. Crunch your toes. Spread it wide. But this one feels a little bit easier for me. Crunch the toes. Spread it wide. Last time, crunch. Spread the toes. That's good. Bring your big toe down, little toes up. Little toes down, big toe up. Ah. And relax. Good. Shake up a little. Three, two, and one. That's it. Okay. Take a few shoulder width. We're just then flowing powerful. Breathing in, stretching out. In. Up and forward. Slow and steady. Activating the body. In, stretching out. Arms by the sides. Use your breathing. In. Choreograph the movement with the breath. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. 
out in. Then in. Out. In. Out. In. In. Out. Two more. In. Out. In. Out. Last time. In. Out. In. Doing a side stretch. Again with the arm and the breathing. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, in, out. In. Out. In. Out. One more cycle, please. In. And out. In. And out. In. Out. In. Okay, take the feet shoulder width, just inside the shoulders. Take the hands to the hips and you're doing the hip rotation, okay? So you're pushing the hips back here, gently bending forward, and then around to one side, forward, around to the other side, making a big sit. That's my hip cracking, okay? Breathe as you go. You're breathing in and around, and out and around. And out. One more for me to get to five. Hips pointing back. Now going the opposite direction. In and around. Out and around. And try to feel the head of the femur rolling in that hip joint. Giving mobility. Steady. Okay, I have one more to go. Simple position. It's good. Now you're doing chair pose. Take the feet slightly together. It's about fist, fist width apart. Remember, you're trying to keep the feet flat on the ground. By spreading the weight evenly through the toes and heel. Okay, breathing in, taking the arms up. You can bring the palms together if you wish, or you could have them parallel. And then breathing out, soften the knees to go just over the toes, then sit back with your hips. And coming up. And out. In. And out. In. And 
out to most of it in and out. In and out. One more to go. In and out. In and out. Ah, so now I'm starting to say. This is the torso. We're going to be doing the rotated version now, okay? And just open up the spine before we go on there. Alright, ready? Feet above, this distance apart. Okay, bending the knees. On the exhale, take the hips back. Bring the palms together on the chest. Take your left elbow on the outside of the right knee. And then twist. Turn and look up towards the sky. Four. Three. Two. And one. Come all the way up to standing. You get a break. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Let's do the right side, okay? Breathing in. Out. Arms together at the chest. Hands onto the right elbow, onto the left knee here. Just around. Four. Three. Two. Back. Ooh, those muscles telling me. <laughs> Take all of this one. Five, four, three, two. That's good. Come up to the front of your mat. Let's do a serene mascara fit. Moving up, in, up, in, up, in, out, in. In. Out. Left side. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. In. Out. In. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop position. Take a breath. Inhale. Exhale. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Position. Inhale. Exhale. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. Start. In. Out. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Start. Inhale. Exhale. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Start. Inhale. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In, out. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Bob's wife. Relax. Okay, you're taking your right hand onto the hip, just behind your back. And the left hand is going towards the heel, okay? Version of canon. So you're exhaling, going back. And then aligning your spine. Straightening it up a bit. And if you wish to, you can lengthen the right arm here, out over the head. Four, three, two, and one. Swing it around the body. And then back. Ah, using a child pose from here. Hips back, put the leg out. Arms down, head down. Four, three, two, and one. That's good. Bring the leg back, down dog. Four, three, two, one. Okay, stop. Left leg up. Yeah. Four, three, two, one. You really want to move it a little bit forward, it's a little one millimeter forward. Four, three, two, one. Left arm down onto the leg, leg to the right side. Very nice. small arm, make that right side longer. One, so all the way up and over. And that left side long. Again, you want to move it just a little millimeter forward to get the right lengthening. Four, three, two, one. And now arms wide. And relax. Take the left hand behind the back of the hip. Reaching back with the right hand towards the heel. And then pushing this forward, head back. The version of the neck. And if you want to lengthen the left arm, you can, stretching it out over the head. Swing so now around the body, do that, like that, hands down, down dog. Sorry, we didn't do child pose. Leg out, hips back. Four, three, two. One. That's it. Lay back, table position, and then up and up. Four, three, two, one. That's good. 
crocodile pose. So knees down, and your stomach. Pull your arms. Get down for one minute. Pay attention to the slow, steady movement of your breathing. Seem to refresh the body. That's good. Bow pose. Reaching back with both hands to both legs. Now, breathing in with the head and chest. Now lift the knees up and start lengthening your legs up, activating and stretching the entire body. Five, four, three, two, and one. Release, hold the hands, turn the head. 10 seconds. Good, coming back. Last the empty hand, please. This time you'll be rolling onto the sides, okay? Ready? In. Four. Three. Two. One. To the right side. Stay there. At the center, activate the body, go higher. On to the left side. Stay there. Okay. Activate the body, go higher. And relax. Pull the hands, turn the head. Take about 10 seconds.
very much. Dharma Dog is a child of this, as the pump post was fine. My strong Dharma Dog, left knee the back, bend the knees down, pitch back and head down, round in the back. Four, three, two, and one. That's it, sitting up, and let's straight out. Ah, can you wait? Good. On the exhale, letting fall. In. Out. In. Out. In. Last time, as low as you can get. Out. Stay down. Feel free to lengthen the arms if you wish. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's Take a little shake. Okay, let's do this. Again, so we'll be put against the main card. Remember, that straight leg should be a bit intelligent, alive. Put it in. Up and forward. Slide the hands down the leg. Pull low down wherever you can reach. Draw the body down, press settle into the toes. Use your breathing to work with the body and to work with the leg. Four, three, two, one, and yeah. Squash your back. Position the body well. Use your proprioception. The sense of where the limbs are, how the joints are oriented. Take your mind into the spine, into that leg. Breathing in. And then forward, pull low down the leg. 
you separated the wood from the body. The secret lies in finding a balance between relaxation and aliveness, alertness, without bringing tension or resistance. Five, four, three, two, and one. Get the dub, and yep. And squash your back. Two. Relax. Okay, full forward fold. Basti Moto Masana. Breathing in. Now bending forward. Side hands down the leg, or we'll roll down the leg and reach. See the wood for the body. Remember to activate the legs, pushing the knees, pushing the heels. You will try to lengthen the entire back of the body. From the heels to the tailbone, from the tailbone to the back of the head. Use your breathing to look at the body. Five, four, three, two, one, and yeah. I just want to like to relax the tension. Let's lie down, ready right to do the twist. Leave both legs straight out and then bring them together on the center line of the body. Bend your right knee, press the sole of the foot down next to the right ankle next to the left knee. That's good. Now remember you're trying to keep both shoulders firmly placed on the ground. Don't let the shoulders lift up, okay? On the exhale, lower the right knee on your left side. The right hip will roll off, the left hip is pressing down to the ground. Both shoulders still firm in place. Keep your left leg straight. If you can, you can reach down with your left hand onto the outside of the right knee here. Then they do. Open on the twist a bit more. Position your other hand and arm for your comfort. And breathe. Two, 
two, and one. Slowly coming back. Let's go. Stretch the right leg out, bring the left leg in. Repeat the process. Now twisting on your right side. Three, two, and one, and that. That's good. Stretching your legs. You want to draw both knees to your chest. Let's work with the knees a bit. You can go a little bit in and out, side to side, small circles of each. And then come to your false pose. Now start the sides. Feet apart. Lift the head and rise the back down. Giving space to your neck. Eyes closed, please. Slowly breathing in and out. Please take care of the body. Use your breathing to relax the body completely. As you exhale, let go of the tensions and micro tensions and hidden tensions from the body. As you inhale, feel the coolness of your breath flowing in, taking you deeper into relaxation. Just allow the body to rest, feeling full of gravity. Observe those beautiful sensations of being at ease. And as you become more conscious, that sense of relaxation. You find it easier and easier to release the mind. Just letting go of a restless mind and coming into a beautiful, peaceful mind.
Let's give you some information. Let E superflow by relax in a moment. Where everything is okay in a way. As you rest the body, you can guide the energy. Focus this on the abdomen. The navel chakra, the location of your vital energy. As you breathe in, try to accumulate and gather the energy in that area. As you breathe out, hold it there, or release it. You feel satisfied with the afternoon. Bring your attention to your chest, location of the heart chakra, and your emotional energy. When you breathe in, seek to accumulate and gather your energy there. As you exhale, hold on to the energy, don't release it. When you feel satisfied with the chest area, you can now bring your attention to that point between the eyebrows, the brow chakra, the location of your mental energy. You have your focus there. When you breathe in, Seek to accumulate and gather the energy at that point. When you breathe out, try to hold on to the energy or bring a sense of ease to your being.
So if you're satisfied, you can release your focus at that point. Just open up to the experience of the body. Try to feel the flow of the body throughout. The flow of energy throughout the body. Now we are coming to the end of our practice today. I invite you to listen to the mantra for health and liberation. The Maham Rikin Jai Mantra. Oh, I am a Ganya Jamini. Sugati Pushi Bardana. Ubaru Kani Babandana. Vidyo Nuxia Mamita. Oh, I am a Ganya Jamini. Sugati Pushi Bardana. Uvaru Kaniba Bhattaka Vitur Mukshya Mamrita O Prayapada Yajamade Sugati Pushti Vardana Uvaru Kaniba Bhattaka Vitur Mukshya Mamrita Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Now, slowly breathe in and out. Return to the feeling of the body. The way the body rests in your mind. You engage with your mind and then you prepare for the rest of your day. In the right time, you can begin awakening the body by making small movements with your feet, hands, and head. And then you feel guided to coming up to your sitting position. Thank you very much for joining me for today's practice. I hope that it was a productive one, and that you could feel the energetic effects in the body. Or everyone, you have a very conscious day. Thank you very much.